The video game news is continuing to flow this week with three stories just happening very recently that I definitely want to talk about. One of my most anticipated games of 2019 finally has a release date and it's definitely a game we need to talk about and why you should be excited for this game. A console manufacturer from the mid 90s has now announced a new console that's coming and a lot of people are confused, myself included. And finally, one of the new perks for Nintendo Switch Online owners in Japan is coming stateside. A lot of people are excited for it and it's definitely something we need to talk about. So what's going on in the world of video game news? Did I get a new haircut? Are the rumors true? Do I have a mullet now? All this and more will be answered in this video. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. And let's talk about everything going on in the world of video games. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richard. So first and foremost, one of my favorite games of the last generation was Ghostbusters the video game. If you did not play Ghostbusters the video game, I, I'm ashamed of you. Like, that game was so damn good. It was so much fun, and it was such a well-done game. It, of course, featured all of the voice actors from the original two Ghostbusters movies. You had Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, Dan Aykroyd, and, of course, the late Harold Ramis. Harold Ramis actually said before passing that this was essentially the third Ghostbusters movie in terms of the script, and it definitely translated into the game itself. It was an absolutely epic game. There was a couple different versions released, of course, across different platforms. The main one that most people talk about was the PS3 and the Xbox 360 version, which of course had a realistic graphical style and was pretty much what you would expect from a Ghostbusters game from that era. The Wii version, of course, was a different style of game. It followed the same narrative and the same story, had all the same voice acting, but they went with a cartoony art style because of the limitations of the Nintendo Wii. This was also available on the PS2. The Nintendo Wii version of the game did include motion controls though, which actually made it sort of fun playing the game and trying to wrangle in all these ghosts. And then there was re versions released for handheld systems at the time, the Nintendo DS and the PSP. But really, the two versions that everyone really liked were the PS3, Xbox 360, and of course the Wii version of the game. Well, this game was announced as beginning a remaster and releasing in 2019, and now we finally have a release date for this of October 4th. So on October 4th, you will be able to pick up the Ghostbusters video game remastered for the PS4, the Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and will also be available on the Epic Store, I believe. That's a whole nother story. The whole different stores of PC gaming. I don't do PC gaming, so we're not going to talk about that. But really, you should be super excited for this game. I played this game both on the Xbox 360 and the Nintendo Wii back in the day, and it's an absolutely fantastic experience. I'm really looking forward to seeing these remastered graphics, and I'm definitely interested to see if the Nintendo Switch version will potentially have gyro controls in the game, because I think that would sort of help make that version of the game stand out because obviously it's not going to be as graphically pleasing as the PS4 and the Xbox One versions. I'm sure it'll look still great, but there will be some sort of a downgrade more than likely with this. But really, I'm super excited for this game. It's been so long since I've played it, and it's definitely a game worth playing. Now, if you plan on picking up this game physically, it is a GameStop exclusive. So make sure you guys go over to GameStop and pre-order this game so that you ensure that you get your copy. But really, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters in any way, shape, or form, whether it's the films, the cartoon, or the subsequent toy lines, that we got from all the Ghostbuster stuff. You definitely owe it to yourself to play this game. It is a fantastic game, and honestly, I cannot wait to get my hands on it once again. So Neo Geo slash SNK has been a pretty busy company lately. You've been seeing a lot of their legacy titles pop up on multiple things. You, of course, had a recent Samurai Showdown that just came out for the PS4 and will be coming to other systems subsequently throughout 2019. And, of course, they entered the Mini line with the Neo Geo Mini. And there was a bunch of different Neo Geo Minis. They had ones with different games on them, had different styles to them as well, and it seemed like it was a pretty well-received system. I actually never got around to getting a Neo Geo Mini. I probably should check one out. I did hear that there were some problems with it, but it still looks like an interesting system. Well, Neo Geo, of course, when they announced the Neo Geo Mini, it seemed like they also announced a new system that was coming out. And a lot of people sort of just chalked that up to a mistranslation. They were like, okay, there's no way in hell a new Neo Geo system is being worked on because it just doesn't really fit the video game landscape. Well, late last night on Twitter, Neo Geo's official Twitter page actually tweeted out something very interesting. And now a lot of people are just very, very confused. So this tweet is coming to us from the SNK Global official Twitter page. I know I keep saying Neo Geo, but it's just a force of habit. And this is the following tweet. A next-gen Neo Geo hardware is coming after Neo Geo Mini. With a modern design and a wonderful play feeling that you can even link to your Neo Geo Mini, the new hardware will provide you a Neo Geo journey that you have never experienced. Stay tuned for more information. Hashtag SNK, hashtag Neo Geo. Excuse me? 
a new Neo Geo system. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I am a Neo Geo expert in any way, shape, or form, because when the Neo Geo came out back in the day, that was super expensive. The games were expensive. Everything for that system was expensive, and my family didn't have a lot of money growing up, so I was happy to get whatever I got for my Sega Genesis, which of course was a cheaper system. But the Neo Geo really was sort of one of the first at-home arcade experiences that you could have because of how powerful the system was. You had these big hulking cartridges that just looked absolutely awesome, but of course, after the Neo Geo and the Neo Geo CD, you never had another SNK console come out for, to us from Neo Geo. You didn't have any subsequent follow-ups. I believe they were working on something called the M2, which was a canceled CD-based system, but other than that, you didn't have anything. So to see them wanting to come back in the future is definitely very, very interesting to me. And I think it's interesting how they sort of words, how they say, you know, a Neo Geo experience that you've never had before, because a lot of people have never had a Neo Geo experience. Even collecting for the Neo Geo in 2019 is extremely expensive. It's up there with the Sega Saturn and even more so expensive than a lot of Sega Saturn titles out there. So I'm definitely very interested to see what Neo Geo is going to bring to the table. Obviously, they're going to have great first party support if they're doing SNK style games for the system, but how are you going to attract third party consumers? What sort of system is this going to be? How exactly is it going to link up to the Neo Geo Mini? There are definitely way more questions than answers when it comes to the system, but new hardware is always exciting. So I definitely want some more information on this. I definitely want to see what the future holds for Neo Geo when it comes to a new console, because I think it could be very exciting. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of Neo Geo entering the home console market once again after like a 20 plus hi year hiatus. And finally, you might remember a couple days ago on the channel, we talked about how Nintendo was finally finally improving Nintendo Switch Online play. They announced that in Japan, for a week, you would be able to play Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for absolutely free, pending you had a Nintendo Switch Online account. And then you could purchase the game at a discounted price after that. And that, to me, was absolutely awesome. That's the kind of stuff that Nintendo needs to be focusing on when it comes to the Nintendo Switch Online. The NES games are cool, the Famicom games are cool, but people want additional stuff. And when you have the Nintendo Switch library with so many different games out there, it really would lend itself to doing these sort of free trials. Now, of course, at the time of that filming, nothing had been announced for Europe or North America. So a lot of people were wondering, was this going to just be a Japanese only thing? We have seen Japan only things when it comes to Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Look at things like Resident Evil 7 and of course, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Both of those games released via the Nintendo Switch via a cloud service through Capcom and Ubisoft respectively, and they never saw a release in North America. So it's not like Japan doesn't get free exclusive stuff that North America and Europe does not get. Well, yesterday, it was announced that yes indeed North America and Europe would be getting participation in this program but they're not getting Captain Toad Treasure Tracker they're actually getting a game that I'm kind of interested in and that is Mario Tennis Aces now I never picked up Mario Tennis Aces I played the demo that they had for it and I had a lot of fun with it I thought it was a good game and then at Too Many Games 2018 Mario Tennis Aces had just came out so a lot of people were playing it and Wood actually had a t uh, Too Many Games stream where we were like locked in this little cubicle and live streaming the game on his channel and I played it with him and I absolutely wrecked his ass and I didn't even know really how to play the game and he had the game for a couple days so you know he had to catch that L but I really had fun playing the multiplayer in the game and of course since the release of Mario Tennis Aces they have added in a bunch of free DLC there's new game modes there's new characters to play as and now Nintendo Switch owners who have Nintendo Switch online in both North America and Europe will be able to experience Mario Tennis Aces for free for one week so between August 7th and August 13th, you will be able to download Mario Tennis Aces, the complete game from the Nintendo Switch eShop for absolutely free and play as much as you want. You'll be able to play online, you'll be able to play the story mode, which admittedly I heard isn't very long, so you'll probably be able to beat the story mode and of course just experience the full game itself. Now Nintendo will actually be doing a sale on Mario Tennis Aces during this time frame if you're enjoying the game that will last until August 20th, making the game 30% off the normal price of the game. So I think this is absolutely fantastic. I think this is absolutely genius. By offering free full games for a week so that people can check them out, download them, and see if they like them, you're probably going to spark Mario Tennis Aces sales. I may actually end up picking up Mario Tennis Aces if I have fun playing it for the week that I have. It's obviously going to reinvigorate the online scene as well, and it's going to reinvigorate people's interest in that game. And I think it's a very smart move by Nintendo. I don't expect them to do this you know, every week or anything, but I think if you do one game a month, 
month. Like this obviously gives a great value to Nintendo Switch's online service. This is what people want from Nintendo Switch Online. NES and Famicom games are cool, but when you're offering free games to try out for a week, I think that's a better incentive for people to try it out. If you're saying, hey, once a month, you'll be able to check out a full game, you'll be able to play it as long as you want, and then you can pick it up at a discounted price via our eShop. I think people will be very happy with that, and it will probably increase the amount of signups for Nintendo Switch's online service. So I definitely will be checking it out between August 7th and August 13th. Like I said, I don't own the game. It's definitely a game that's sort of kept its value as well. You don't really see it go on sale very often, but kudos to Nintendo, very cool stuff here. All right, so those are three video game stories that I found to be very interesting that I just wanted to share with you guys and share my thoughts on it. So let me know in the comments section down below, will you be picking up Ghostbusters Remaster when it comes out on October 4th? And the correct answer is yes, you will be. I think it's like $30 for the physical version. There's no rhyme or reason to not pick this up. What do you think about Neo Geo coming back into the home console market? Are you as confused as everyone else is? And will you be checking out Mario Tennis Aces? And what other games would you like to see Nintendo put on their Nintendo Switch online service to check out for a week for free for the upcoming month? Is there going to be a game in September? I definitely hope so. What game would you like to see in September? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. And yeah, yeah, I went ahead and did the mullet. I'll catch you guys on the next video <laughs> later. <laughs>